This time we're going to look at a new meter from Tessman. This measures magnetic fields, electromagnetic fields, and RF magnetic fields. It's uh, for the tinfoil hat people to uh, measure their environment. Today we're going to look at the Hound 200 EFM meter by Tessman. Now electro EMF is electromagnetic fields. This will detect electromagnetic fields. Um, it'll do magnetic fields, electromagnetic fields, and RF. Three in one, three axis mode, peak measurement, visual and audible alarm, and it's got a large screen. This one's blue in color. Uh, I've never had one of these meters before. This is my first one. So we're going to open this unit up and just see what it does and see what information it can give you. This is more for the people that are concerned that electromagnetic fields may be causing them harm. And they want a way to see if there's actually any magnetic fields. So it's not a, it's not a voltmeter or anything. This is just testing induction for magnetic fields. So we've got some batteries to put in it. Comes with the good old Duraleak. And uh, the field sensors this way. RF microwave antenna. Oh, cool. I'll take this around my microwave oven and see if it's leaking. Uh, we'll put the batteries in and we're going to test this thing and just see what exactly it does. But before I do that, I'm going to open up the manual and just kind of see what the manual tells me on this. So let's read the manual. So this is what this little beauty does. It tests for the presence of AC magnetic fields, AC electric fields, and radio frequency. It says it's suitable for use in homes and workplaces to evaluate potential effects of electromagnetic fields and uh, so forth. So um, in other words, I should, could be able to, should be able to take this thing outside near transmitters and see this thing light up like a Christmas tree if I get near like an AM radio transmitter. And... Um, it says detects all three types of EFM pollution, electromagnetic, electric, AC electric, and AC magnetic, and RF microwaves. Well, I can generate RF here. I've got a number of transmitters around here that I can certainly test this with. I have a, a little 400 milliwatt AM transmitter right there and behind me, and I can also test it with my cell phone. Uh, smart meter, oh yeah, we can take it out and check the smart meter out. Wi-Fi radiation, Bluetooth, overhead AC power lines and transformers. So it's gonna detect all these things that people consider to be bad for you. Whether they are or not, that the jury is still out on. Some people feel that exposure to magnetic fields is going to cause them harm, and other people uh, don't believe it's harmful. And then there's the rest of us that just don't give a flying F, you know what I'm going at, right? Because uh, we're exposed to electromagnetic radiation everywhere we go walk outside and during the day and you're exp you're exposed to a giant nuclear furnace in the sky that's going to give you way more inter it, way more radiation not just emf but all kinds of other radiation um much more than you're going to ever get from something around the house this is our our measurement it's three axes x y and z and it, it uh, for ac magnetic the frequency range is 440 to 5,000 hertz, so it should detect uh, AC power, AC magnetic fields, and things like speakers and uh, speaker wires. AC um, electric fields, 40 to 500 hertz, and the measurement range is uh, 1 to 2,000 volts per meter. And RF, it's 50 hertz to 3.5 gigahertz, so this should nicely cover my cell phone, my router, and so forth. So we're going to see this thing light up like a Christmas tree because I tell you right now, this place is full of RF. We're going to see so many magnetic fields around my place here. It will boggle your mind. So if I turn this thing on, right now we are in, uh, what are we in? We're in magnetic fields. So, um, yeah, okay, let's see if we can get some magnetic fields around here. What if I bring it near the camera? Does the camera make magnetic fields? nothing so far so take it near my okay so magnetic field sensors all around so I wonder what I'm gonna do for magnetic fields maybe I put a magnet near it I think I'm putting a magnet near it will trip this thing probably not but 
Oh yeah. Oh yeah. There we go. <laughs> I, I, I just take a magnet. I got this thing screaming just from a, a small magnet. Just one of these is enough to make this thing go a bit crazy. It says it detects Z, X, and Y. So. Now, if I click on, if I push the max button, it should tell me what the max was. Oh, I guess I have to do that before. Now it holds it. Has a peak indicator as well, but you see, you get the idea. That's magnetic. Okay, the next one. If I press down the function key, now it's going to be electrical. So now it's just detecting induction. And this way, you could even detect where wires are in walls, just like a, a voltage tick, the non-contact voltage detector. This works the same way, just from induction just like that. And likely if I just bring my hand near it just from induction in the air the body picks up electromagnetic fields it's a good chance that just holding my hand near here will get some reading which it does. The next mode is RF so if I switch it to RF electrical let's go to RF okay so now it's going to measure radio frequency and I just so happen to have a two-way radio here and uh, I think the battery is dead it might not work I'll have to grab another one I think I left this thing turned on is what happened and I killed the battery then I go find another radio all right here's another radio we're gonna take this inside too um, we're gonna take this inside and try around some some microwave emitting devices but we'll just see if I key this radio up whether this will make sure that I'm on yeah, okay, that should work. Oh yeah, I don't even have to be near it. This is a digital radio, so that's why it's pulsing. You can actually hear it on my stereo. Didn't access the repeater. The way the meter shows that I am indeed transmitting. It spoke back to me. Let's see if I can get in. Via testing. DMR and coffee for the Cass Street Coffee Net on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday mornings at 0800 local on top of Cass Street. Join us. I think it's just making announcements today. Yeah, like... Oh, that was me. I, I got in. It just repeated me back. A seven testing, testing. Let's see if it'll repeat me back. For more information on the Pacific Northwest DMR system, please visit pnwdigital.net. That's pnwdigital.net. Yeah, it actually worked. It only took a minute. WA7 DMR, parrot service, clear. <laughs> the, the parrot service that they've got is for, you can, you can test your signal, see if you can get in and back, and it basically records you, or re repeats you back. Um, anyway, that's fun with that. I never used DMR, it's a pain in the butt. Anyway, just wanted to show that this thing actually does detect radio frequency from transmitters. As you can see, off the end of the scale, even when this is uh, a few feet away, it's detecting RF. So this is my router closet, and I don't even get the unit close to it, and my uh, the router is going off the off the end of the scale here. This clock has a wireless camera in it, so a device like this could be uh, useful for finding hidden cameras. There's a hidden camera in here operating on 900 megahertz. Here's another 
Wi-Fi access point and as you can hear as I approach it's detecting the Wi-Fi the last thing I'm going to test microwave oven I'll put it on for 30 seconds it's just going to detect any leakage from my microwave and of course it does it detects it detects RF from the microwave oven how far does it detect it well we're moving back five feet okay here we go I'm still detecting it so it's detecting microwaves for well I'm probably 10 feet away right now and it's still detecting the microwave oven running let's check it on speakers see if it picks up magnetic fields from the speakers which it does at the wave now in addition I should pick up some RF because this has got a Wi-Fi receiver in here that picks up internet radio and it is it's picking up the RF from the Wi-Fi receiver right there that's where the antenna is right behind where I'm pointing this right now I'm gonna do one more test before we tear this down and see what's inside it I'm gonna take it up and I'm gonna drive up to our 200 and I think it's 230 kilovolt power lines that everybody in the community was so upset with when they put them in we're gonna drive up and stand right below them and see whether this detects any electromagnetic fields from 230 kilovolt. However, before I go up to the uh, the power lines, I have just pulled up at the cell site here. Let's put this thing on RF. And you can see that we are getting RF. Now, I'm not exactly close. I'm outside the fence. There are the antennas. And here's the meter. So, if I point it towards the antennas, You can see we are picking up RF from the cell antennas. What if I point it the other direction? I move to the other side of the parking lot. You can see the signal is considerably lower. As I move closer, the signal is going to increase, which is to be expected. Now these antennas are operating in the 850, 1700, uh, 2.1 gigahertz. 700 megahertz as well and there is some uh, there is some 5g stuff in here but I don't believe these antennas are 5g they're on the other side of the building but there is some 5g equipment here all right this time I'm going to stand under some 230 kilo or 230,000 230 kilovolt power lines we'll set this meter up here and already I'm picking up stuff this is just on the magnetic side of things this one's actually the magnetic not the electrical but just the magnetic fields we'll switch it to electrical and here we go so we're picking up as I move it around when I get right underneath the power lines I am picking up some AC electrical magnetic signals but as you can see they're in the safe zone oh right here Maybe if I approach the tower itself, this should be grounded, so I wouldn't expect that I'm going to get anything if I get near the tower, but I won't expect to see any RF here. Magnetic-wise, I'm getting some in here, but yeah, I'm getting a little bit of uh, AC. Oh, that's magnetic. Let's go AC here, electrical AC. Not getting any, nothing, anything here. As I move away. pointing it at the wires I got a little bit there but I'm standing directly underneath these towers so we are able to pick up a little bit of electromagnetic radiation so I guess the meter is doing its job but it's very low right it's uh, you know, what 40 48 or 53 volts per meter which is pretty low I'm actually getting a higher reading when I stepped away, but I'm still, you know, relatively below the lines here. But I did get it into the red there for a second. Now we're back to green. Everybody's probably looking at me thinking I'm some, some conspiracy nut job. But I'm actually not, because I'm not at all worried about electromagnetic radiation like some people. I'm just showing off a meter and what it does. 
let's go back to the to the shop and take this thing apart. All right, we're now going to drive by a microcell. The antennas are mounted on the pole. You can see it on that pole up there and see what type of readings we get as I go past it. As you see, the readings jump up a little bit. I'm off to the side of the antenna. We'll move to another one. Okay, we're going to pop up, come up on another one here on this pole. And as I roll up on here, we may see a little bit of RF. Now, these are very low power. These are only 4 watts. But as I go by, we detect the RF energy from that microcell. There's a smart meter. Our smart meter every so often will transmit. Again, I'm right up to the meter itself. And that's it. So as you can see, the smart meters are not the big, bad, scary devices that everyone claims. They actually transmit a very low signal. But they're not transmitting all the time. They just send out a signal in short little bursts. And I pretty much got to be right on top of it to pick a signal up. There you go, you see. So the big, bad, scary smart meters aren't really that big and bad and scary at all. We're talking milliwatts per meter squared. It's very, very low power. Now we've seen the unit in operation. Let's uh, see what's inside it. Take out the batteries first. So it looks to have an embedded chip. Can't even tell you what it is. It's just it's just a chip that's been embedded right onto the board. We'll take this little circuit board out here and see if there's anything else on here. Looks like this, I guess that's the battery connections, yeah. Oh, wonderful. The spring's even bent over. I'm surprised it even works. That's for the battery terminal. Battery terminal's here. And then we can look at the different sensors that are in here. and identify the different sensors that we've got. So it's going to have induction sensors and RF sensors, which are going to be very, very similar. It's just going to be this metal bar at the front here, I guess, is the uh, electromagnetic sensors. So there's the other side. It's just the display. There's a couple of little chips and some LEDs on here. And I guess these, these wires are for the, the backlights in behind the LCD screen. And the button assembly. I don't, there's no there's no components under the LCD screen. So there's a couple transistors, an IC, and a couple transistors, and a couple capacitors here, and the various LEDs right there. That's all there is on this side. And of course the contacts for the, uh, the rubber uh, metal or carbon contacts for the buttons. This is just the light. So nothing really to see there. On this side of the board, we've got uh, three I four ICs, and then this one embedded, which would be the display driver, I'm sure is what that is. These are the ones that are probably doing the measurements. This is probably nothing nothing fancy. Just your standard, probably just like a standard multimeter for that matter, that takes a voltage that's derived from one of these and measures it. Uh, here are going to be the magnetic sensors. Right for the three different axes, one up and down this way, one side to side, and one this way. These are for the magnetic pickups to pick up magnetic fields, and all they are is just looks to be just uh, choke coils with a ferrite iron to pick up magnetic fields. These two here are going to be your electromagnetic and RF detection devices, which is basically a, a way of just saying it's an antenna. It's an antenna that picks up electromagnetic energy in the air and applies it down to the circuitry for measurement. And that's pretty much all this thing is. A couple of another IC down here, a uh, regulator down here, I'm sure that's a regulator, a buzzer, and basically pretty pretty simple. And I expected that it would be relatively simple. 
Anyway, I'm going to throw this together now and uh, I'll put a link. For those of you that are interested in measuring electromagnetic fields around your house or your environment, uh, this will do the job. I know there's some people out there that uh, are sometimes referred to as the tinfoil hat people that uh, are concerned about possible health effects from exposure to electromagnetic energy. Uh, I agree that there probably is some risk when you're exposed to high level microwave energy. But the, the jury is still out on that one because uh, science has not been able to prove one way or another whether the signals are in fact harmful or not. Yeah, 3.5 gigahertz. So this will detect the 5G frequencies because they're all below 3.5 gigahertz. So it'll detect them. As we saw, it did detect the cellular signals, 4G LTE signals, and 3G that we were detecting with this today. Um, anyway, I, that's about all I can say on this thing. Uh, really, there's not a lot, not a lot else to uh, really show you other than how this thing works and what the inside was like. So thanks for watching, and we'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.